Last time, we did this. This time, we're gonna do this. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reitz. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at that mountain lion scene that we created a few videos back, and we're gonna take an in-depth look at how to add color to it. Now, in case you missed it, we used a pyrography kit and a few other techniques to create it, but very little tooling. Today, we're gonna take a look at how to add color to it. So one thing I wanna mention is that there's a lot of different ways you could approach painting this particular project. This is just how I approached it. It worked really well. I wanted a subtle look and I thought I'd share it with you. So if you don't have an airbrush, no worries, it's not a big deal. You can do this with a traditional paintbrush. What you wanna do is you wanna grab your paint. I'm gonna assume you're working with Angelus because it's one of the, the best leather craft paints out there that you can get. So grab your Angelus and grab a reducer. Angelus makes a fantastic one called Too Thin. And what we wanna do is we wanna mix a couple of drops of the paint and a couple of drops of the Too Thin, mix it together really good. We want roughly a 50-50 ratio to start out with. Then you can add more or of one or the other to get it where you want. And what we're looking for is we want transparency. So we wanna be, when we put it on there, we wanna be able to see through the paint and we want it to, to kind of be the consistency of water so that it blends easily. Once I've got the shadows roughed in, I'm gonna lay down a base layer of yellow ochre. Mountain lions have kind of a hint of yellow in their coats, but we don't want it to be overpowering, just in undertone. Now, Angelus doesn't make yellow ochre, but we can get close by mixing three parts yellow with one part light brown. From there, you just have to play with it a little bit, but that'll get you close. Once you've got your yellow ochre mixed up, don't forget to add your reducer to it. That's gonna be very important all the way through the project. As I'm putting that yellow ochre on the mountain line, you can see that it's a little too yellow. It's a little too bright right now, and that's okay. We're gonna be layering in light browns on top of it, and that's gonna pull it back. That's why it's so important to thin your paints. It helps them blend easier, and it shifts them from opaque to transparent. After we do that, we're gonna add a light coat of brown to the whole project, the log and the mountain lion. And as I do that, you'll see it, the yellow's already starting to pull back. It's not nearly as bright. So one of the really cool things about most acrylic paints is that once you've thinned them down and reduced them, they can be erased. Now, it's really subtle, and some you can erase more than others, but it's worth the extra couple of minutes it takes because it softens and blends everything really nicely. Now here, I'm using a kneadable eraser, but you could easily use one of those uh, pink ones that you used in school. Just make sure you have a pretty light touch with it. Then, I'm just gonna keep repeating that same process. Gonna build up the shadows, gonna blend it and soften it with the eraser, and just like with the pyrography kit, we wanna work from the largest shadows down to the smaller detailed shadows. Now we're gonna take that same brown that we used earlier in the project, the one that we reduced, we're gonna take that, we're gonna use it like a, um, like a wash. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work it into the shadows and we're gonna use it to add color to the log. As I add it to the log, I'm gonna occasionally blot off any of the excess paint. Now we're getting down to some of the finer shadows, like the face. And I'm gonna be working with the same exact principles, the same exact techniques, just on a smaller scale with a smaller brush.
Once I'm happy with the shadows, I'm gonna go back and start adding in the highlights. And to do that, we wanna get one of the brighter browns that we have, and we're gonna mix that just like we did before. But this time we want it a little bit thicker. What we wanna do is we're gonna have 75% paint and 25% reducer. And that's gonna give us a consistency right around milk, which is gonna be perfect. It's gonna make it transparent, and it's gonna give us the ability to blend those highlights into the rest of the scene. How do I know where to add the shadows and the highlights? Well, the shadows should be pretty obvious, but for the highlights, I'm constantly looking back to my reference image and seeing where they should go and following that as a guide. So at this point, he was getting a little bit beige, so you know that's not really what we want. So we want to go back in with some more yellow, but we want it to be highly, highly diluted, like 75% reducer, 25% paint. Start there. If you need to thicken it up a little bit with more paint, that's fine. But what we want to do is we want to go back in with this reduced yellow and add it to the highlights. We don't want to add it to the shadows. If we add it to the shadows, we're going to end up, end up with yellowish brown shadows, and that's not what we're going for. They're supposed to be brown, not yellow. So as I work through this, one thing I'll point out is that it's a kind of push and pull technique. You push the shadows back and you pull the highlights forward. You push the yellow down with the light brown and you bring it back up with the yellow. What we're trying to do is create kind of a balance between those highlights and lowlights. And we're doing it slowly so that we can adjust as we go. We need to add some highlights to that log, otherwise it's gonna look really, really flat. And to do that, I'm just gonna use that same light brown that we created highlights with on the mountain line. As you're developing the depth in the color, keep asking yourself the same question. What looks too flat? Does something need to be pulled forward with highlights? Does something else need to be pushed back into the background with the shadows? That's that. If you keep asking yourself that question and making minor corrections, you're eventually gonna get the balance that you're looking for. Now that we're more or less where we need to be with the brown, it's time to start bringing in some of the brighter highlights. And to do that, I'm gonna be adding white to the ears and the muzzle and some of the more minor areas, but we don't actually wanna use white. Your true whites and true blacks should only account for like three or 5% of the color. It's very, very little. So I took Angelus white and mixed in a tiny bit of brown and that's gonna kinda of give us an old bone look. It's not quite ivory, it's not quite cream. It's a little bit of a, a brownish white. Really quick, just to emphasize, it doesn't take much of that brown to get the color you're looking for. And I'm talking about, you know, like 5% brown, 95% white. You really wanna go light on that brown because it really will darken up the white very, very quickly. Oh, and don't forget to add your reducer after you get the color you're looking for.
So as I'm adding in these highlights, you can see that they're kind of jumping off the page at you, right? So I'm gonna go back over them with that light brown wash that we used earlier in the project, but this time I'm gonna blot it off right away. We just wanna use that light brown to kind of mute these white highlights. We wanna create highlights just like we did with the shadows. We're gonna build them up in layers. Every time we make a new pass with the highlight color, I'm gonna work in smaller and smaller areas. That's gonna create a blended effect. We're to the point now where we can really start defining some of the deepest shadows and the brightest highlights. And to do that, I'm gonna take Angelus Brown and mix it with a very small amount of black, just like we did with the white and brown earlier. It just takes a small amount. And then I'm gonna thin it down like we did all the other paints. This is gonna give me a kind of a chocolate brown that I can use to work in those darkest areas of the shadows. I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't put black or white on the project yet. We're gonna save that to the very, very end.
So if you saw the first video, you know that I accidentally got some black spots on the project and I, show, I told you that I was gonna show you how I would deal with that. Well, one thing that we did is I ended up carving kind of the suggestion of a wooden frame around the outside. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Phoebing's Antique Finish in dark brown and I'm gonna paint it all the way around that wooden frame. Now I haven't sealed the project yet, which means that Antique is really, really gonna stain the leather in a good way. It's gonna give us that wood look that we're looking for. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights Searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down So from here, it's time to seal the project. The painting's done. We want to start adding some antique to it. And to do that, first thing I always do is I'm going to add five to six layers of aerosol leather sheen on top of the project. Now, I did this off camera because, you know, this is my workshop's in my house. I can't be spraying that in the house. But five to six light coats on top of the project. Then we can add tan coat to it. And the reason I do both the waxy base of the leather sheen seals in the paint so that it can't be smeared or lifted off. But leather sheen's not a great resist. So what we can do is we can lock the color in with the leather sheen, then come back with the tan coat. The tan coat's gonna act as a resist and we get the best of both worlds. From the ground. Once the tan coat dries, I'm going to antique everything except the lion with that same Phoebe's antique finish in dark brown. Even if the sky is falling down Now, we aren't trying to create a lot of color and depth with the antique on the main project, so I'm going to wipe most of it off pretty much immediately. In the first video, we used a textured background stamp to kind of create the suggestion of dead foliage on those branches. And in those areas, I want more color out of the antique. So I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna add my antique back in, and I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit longer. When I antiqued it a minute ago, we let it sit for about 10 minutes. This time, I'm gonna let it sit for like 30 minutes. So I want that foliage to blend a little bit more, look a little bit more natural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that chocolate paint that we mixed up a little earlier and I'm gonna go in with a stippling technique and kind of create a little bit of a, a modeled texture pattern.
And with that, this project's done. Well, that'll do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.